going to do our back fist is going to be the opposite arm. So if I'm going to my left, my right arm goes out, but it's short. So I've got to do an hourglass to get my chest perpendicular to that corner, corner or parallel to the corner. All right. So it's hourglass drop. Hourglass drop. Okay. Ready. Each. Knee. Song. Cheek. Go. Raku. Sichi. Hachi. Q. Ju. All right. So now we're going to do doubles. Well, when you do a double, it doesn't matter. You're doing two attacks, one with the front arm, one with the back arm. So the back arm, whichever hand is back. So my right hand is back. If I do a double and I'm in a back stance, it's not close enough to do any good. If I do a double with the right hand down, it's not close enough to do any good. So it doesn't matter which direction I go, which hand is up, I've got to do an hourglass to get my chest parallel to that corner. All right? So all of these will be parallel to the corner by doing an hourglass. So we're going to go left hand on hot, uh, left hand up first, left foot forward, right hand up right forward. All right, going to the left first. Ready, oh, also straighten and then bend. So it's still kind of that back fist motion. Ready, left pin, right float, each. Right pin, left float, knee. Song. She, I messed that one up. <laughs> Go. Raku, right back fist, right double. Going to the left, left back fist is your main thought. Sichi, Hachi. Q, Ju. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing, except I'm gonna to turn to the left. Instead of the left back fist, left high, it's gonna be turn to the left, right back fist, right high. Turn to the right, opposite hand, back fist, high. All right? So left with the right back fist, right with the left back fist. Going to the left first, right hand ready, each. Going to the right, left hand ready, knee. Song. She. Go. Raku. Sichi. Hachi. Q. Ju. Okay. Now single double head. So the next one's head uh, to get our initial review out of the way. So on this one, I want my left to be up when I end <coughs> this first strike. So left foot will be here, left head, but this one has more steps because it's back fist, but you're throwing both hands up to get that hidden kake, and you do an inside and up. So you're actually doing back fist with your left, 
right inside, left inside, left up. One, two, three, four. And opposite side is right back fist, left inside, right inside to cover your face, and then up through the neck. Okay? So there's four hand movements with one foot movement. Now, because it's lead hand forward, back stance is fine because that's my long arm. Now, if I wanted to do a punch after this, then I would have to go into hourglass. All right? So here we go. 45 left first. Ready. Each back inside, inside up. Right, back, inside, inside, up. I'm going to back up a little bit because my hand's going above the camera, it looks like. <clears throat> Son. Chi. Do. Boku. Sichi, Achi, Q, Ju. Okay, so the next one is crossbody. So it's going to be, I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to go to my left, but I need a right back fist. So as I go to the left, I can't get a I can't get the range unless I hourglass. So my first move, instead of sliding straight on the line, I've got to slide in a curved motion. Now my right back fist inside up works. All right. So it'll be right back fist left, right, right. Going this way, foot curves with a left back fist. Right, left, left. Okay? Right hand ready. Each. Left hand ready. Knee. Song. She. Go. Raku, Sichi, Achi, Q, Ju. Okay, so that's a review of what we'll be doing. I went uh, a little bit slower because Eric hadn't seen this uh, kind of drill yet. Uh, just so you know, the goal on all of these, even though I'm doing four moves with my hands, hands before the feet is a very important thing that Taika talked about all the time. If, if, I, if I go, if I drop my weight and go back fist inside, or yeah, back fist inside, inside, neck, I just put 20 pounds into his neck. If, if my forearm blasts his neck before my foot lands, I put 130 pounds into his neck. So right now, most of you are going, your foot lands and you're doing all that. Eventually, as your foot is sliding, this should, you should, Feel that pop just a split second before that foot lands. And then you've got 130 pounds or, you know, insert whatever you weigh into that. All right. I'm getting a text. Make sure it's not Becky having problems again. I guess Becky just didn't love us today. Let me double check. Nobody's in the waiting room. All right. All right, so now I want to start, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you which one we're going to do, 
So I'll say we're going to do single same side, which is back fist inside out, back fist inside out, three moves to one foot movement. All right. So it's the same side, so a back stance is fine. But I'm going to tell you 90 degrees or 45 degrees. All right. So you're going to turn, if I say 90 left, then you go back fist here. If I say 90 right, if I say 90, uh, or excuse me, 45 left, then it's here. 45 right. So we're going to start playing with a little bit more angles of the web and go through that same drill. Hopefully it will start getting a little bit faster. Eventually you should be able to, to do any angle and then figure out how to compensate if it's, if you're doing a follow-up. All right. So we're going to just do singles right now. And we're only going to use 45s and 90s. Uh, also, Eric, because I got to look at little bitty heads at the top of the screen, uh, sometimes I'll ask a yes or no question. Thumbs out to the side. Happy days is you yes you, or agree. If you can't hear me, disagree, think I'm crazy, just do a big X. Chicago, that's the, that's the Japanese, yeah. I <laughs> Like you're you're full of it, okay? <laughs> All right. So, so first drill, we're gonna do same sides, just gonna do singles, just to kind of get warmed up on going different angles. So here we go. 90 left each. 90 right. Go. 45 left. Go. 45 right, go. 90 left, go. 90 right, go. 45 left, go. 45 right, go. 90 left, go. 90 right, go. 90 left, go. 90 right, go. Okay, everybody seems to be getting that pretty good. We're gonna do the same exact thing, but cross body. So when I say 90 left, you're gonna throw your right back fist inside single. So this is straight, straight at an angle, windmill. Something else I hadn't mentioned, Eric. Uh, a lot of this is Taika's initial responses were straight arms, then bent arms or windmills. So that's another thing we're kind of working on here. All right. <clears throat> so if you turn to your left, you're throwing your right arm straight in a back fist and then doing a windmill. If you turn to the right, you're going to throw a left hand, didn't strike, windmill. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, cross body, 90 left, ready each. So don't forget, if you do back stance, your arm is short and facing the wrong direction. If you do hourglass, it's facing the correct direction. 90 right, left hand ready. Go. 45 left, right hand ready, go. 45 to the right, left hand ready, go. So everybody getting that? That's making sense? I see no Chigawas, I see all thumbs. All right. 90 left. Right hand ready, each. 
90 right, left hand ready, knee. I'm just going to say go instead of the number, since we're not really going to 10 anyway. 45 to the left, right hand ready, go. Forty-five to the right, left hand ready, go. Ninety left, go. Ninety right, go. Forty-five left, go. Forty-five right, go. 90 left, go. 90 right, go. 45 right, go. 45. I said right the last time and went to left, sorry. <laughs> 45 to the right. Ready with your left, go. Like a, like a good parent, do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's, uh, let's put some more things into this. All right? So what I want you to do now is <clears throat> I'm going to call 90 left, 90 right, 90, 45, or 45 left, 45 right. What I want you to do is... Same side, I want you going left, left, and then windmill. So you're gonna do, I'll, uh, I'll do it facing the camera. What I want you to do is go your straight arms, and then here, here, and then you, you can do however many you want. All right, it can be one, two, three. But I want you to think that motion. Now, if I'm in a back stance, like I am purposely in right now, if you look at the lines, if I go back stance, stance, and just do windmills clockwise, my chest is facing this way. So I've got, I've continually got a short hand. So what you should do is go here, and then drop in to your subsequent windmills into an hourglass. See my footwork? So I'm going, my back heel is having to move and I'm here. So that's when I go into that back stance, that throws my hips or what's throwing that hand out. And then as I, drop in to do my clockwise hourglasses, then I've got to get into that. Um, I, here's, here's my bad guy, right? So if I'm in a back stance, this hand can hit them all day. This hand, I can do hourglasses, but nothing's there. If I want to do an hourglass and impact, I've got to come into, uh, if I want to impact, I've got to, with that back hand, I've got an hourglass. Now, if the arm is what I'm working on, that back stance is still fine. But if I go to impact, now I've got to do that hourglass. So, <clears throat> This next part, the big thing is for you to start visualizing when I call 90 left that you've got an opponent here. And I don't care what you visualize, but the first, if I'm going left side, is my strong as I come in and do that, that backhand and drop. Now, as I do my hourglasses, Back stance is fine if I'm working on an arm that's here because my chest is pointed. But if I'm doing techniques to where I've got an impact, I've got an 
impact body, neck, face, then I've got to go into the hourglass. All right? Yeah, good thumbs up. I want you guys to start visualizing what you're doing. So since I'm not in your head, I can't tell if you're visualizing working on the arm, which I'm in a back stance and can do, or hourglass, that back arm becomes equal, forearm, palm, back of the hand, knuckles, whatever. All right? So that'll be left to you. But it's going to be straight bend <laughs> windmill. All right? So we're going to our left 90 degrees first with a left back hand to start it. Left is our primary straight. All right? So here we go. And if you float your heel, your right heel is going to come up, so it should be floating when I do that motion. That, and that helps throw my arm out as I do this. All right? So uh, what we're going to do is 10 to the left at 90 degrees. Somebody just joined us. Marvin, give me a second. You can play with that on your own while I admit him. Hi, Marvin. I guess you're just staying muted. Oh, there we go. Hey, Marvin. Hey, Lee. Uh, all right. So back to what we're doing. Uh, and incidentally, Marvin, if you ever just are in the Southland area, uh, we're still quarantined and want to pick up your decks of cards, just you know, text me and I can put them on the front porch or out here on the side. If not, we'll catch it in a couple of weeks when hopefully the quarantine's lifted. All right. No problem. <laughs> All right, back to what we're doing. So we're just gonna go left with same side, left, left. We're gonna go straight, bend, and then at least two windmills, but you can't do the windmill from a back stance unless you're working on the arm. If you work on the arm, your chest is facing the right way. If you're thinking about striking with that back arm, here, 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 whatever, you've got to go into the hourglass. So we're going to do 10 of those to the left to get used to this new drill. All right? So ready, each. Knee. Song. She. And it doesn't matter if your hands go open or stay closed with doubles. Doesn't matter to me. Go. Raku. Sichi. Hachi. Q. Jew. Okay, everybody watch for a second. So, you should naturally start with all these drills we've been doing for the last few weeks. You should naturally start feeling like when you, when you want to turn your chest that your heel is wanting to do the work. That's our goal. Turn our heel, our chest moves, instead of uh, bad guy, bad guys 
here and I want to move them, my feet are locked and I contort my body. Instead of contorting my body, my heel moves and aligns me the direction that I need to go. So with that in mind, we're going to do the same drill again. What I want you to do is back fist, I'm in a back stance. Drop, so lead hand is long. I'm in a back stance for those three moves. Back stance, back stance, back stance. I don't change. Now, I want you to go double and put that heel in. Now, I want you to do a double block and move your chest to 45. Okay, so how do you do that? So you were hourglass with your with that first double. If you move back to a back stance, you're at a 45. And then if you continue around the windmill, when that hand goes down again, now I'm at hourglass again. And then I can just keep on doing that. I can go arm bar, double strike, arm bar, double strike. And I'm going clockwise. I'll do it facing the camera. So here I am, I'll get on the lines. Right heel is gonna go to 45, back fist, inside, drop. I'm in a back stance. So my chest is facing along this line to the, to the red circle. Probably looks pink or something to you, I don't know. But to this circle up here, that's where my chest is facing when I do those three moves. I don't have the range I need. So when I go to drop into a double, see how that's across my body and tight, if I just drop that heel in, now I'm perpendicular and perpendicular. Okay? Now let's just, just for sake of an exercise, think about I struck the opponent, but now I want to do an arm bar. Their arm would probably be this direction. I would have pushed it across my body. So when I go back and go clockwise, now my chest is facing this 45. Now I go clockwise again and strike uh, below the belt, groin. I go hourglass to go forward. 45, forward, 45, forward, 45. And see my hands are just going with each of these motions. All I'm doing, all I'm doing is clockwise. But every time my right hand goes down, I strike the bad guy. So I'm thinking groin, that's as low as that is at the moment, but hourglass, force efficient, force efficient, arm bar, hourglass, arm bar. So I'm going from a back stance to an hourglass. Back stance, hourglass. Back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass. All right. So the drill is, and I want everybody to do, uh, let's just say, I want you to do 10 moves. So I want you to go uh, 10 footwork move counts. So back stance, hourglass, clockwise, back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass, until you reach 10, uh, 10 count. <laughs> or if you lose count, it's not that big of a deal. But I want you thinking about that, so that you're, you're going, chest is pointing this way, chest is pointing that way, here, there, here, there. Front foot is directly on that line, my chest is facing here. 45. Actually, very good example of this. 
makes it a little bit easier to see. Here I am in a back stance holding this ball and I go to hourglass, my front heel points at that big toe, my chest is pointing forward. Here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are. All right, so uh, I just want you to do that for a few times on your own, going left 90, back stance, drop to the hourglass, clockwise, back stance, clockwise, hourglass, just back and forth, and try to eventually make it smooth, and I'm just going to come up and stare at you. <laughs> okay. He's laughing at Marvin. He's off screen and just throws an arm out to wave at me. So make sure you're only going clockwise. A couple of you are um, whoa, giant tube. That's my tube to tell me how far I can go forward before I'm off camera. Uh, some of you are going, and if you really look at my, my red and black, some of you are going here. And dropping, and you're going this direction, and then turning back and going this. So basically, you're doing this. What I want is this motion. So I'm continually going clockwise, regardless of where my body is going. All right? So I turn back fist. This first one kind of goes counterclockwise, but really the elbow is just dropping. Okay, but from here on out, I drop that and then I'm going clockwise counter or clockwise every single time. So my right hand, the red hand, is coming up and it's just going this way. So I, I'm i down and around. It does not go here, put the brakes on, come back, put the brakes on, come back, put the brakes on. It's solely going clockwise every time I do that. Okay, work on that for just a second. Not sure if that clouds things or makes it better. One of the reasons I had posted on the Facebook group that getting one of these dodgeballs of any size might be a good thing for everybody, dodgeball, basketball, volleyball, is you learn uh, when you're doing our static sticky hand drills, I'm learning to go clockwise continually. I've got to make a conscious effort to put the brakes on and go back and go counterclockwise, right? With the ball, now I'm going clockwise, my right hand, 
is just going clockwise over and over and over again. And that's the same thing I want you to think of here is clockwise drop, clockwise drop. And so my foot is impacting impact of my knuckles and my foot at the at the hourglass 45 come out come out come out and I can even come up on the inside if I'm going to finish on the neck or something which we did I think last week all right so do a few more of those and I'm going to look and stare at everybody All right, that's looking pretty good. This next uh, drill is just gonna continue to go off of that, but it's gonna teach you how to move your body during an encounter, all right? So frequently we do stuff in an encounter where I may, I may do my initial cover and then come in, but my front foot ends up as I'm doing things has to drift as I go around. So my front foot has to drift. Uh, this exercise, the way we're going to do it, is not realistic in that we wouldn't continue going around forever like we're going to do in this one. Well, maybe not forever, but we're going to go to each of the eight points of the compass or star. So here's what the drill is going to be. We're going to do this same motion I'm going to throw that back fist inside, drop. I'm going to go hourglass, and then my right hand is going to come up on the outside. I'm going to go clockwise. As I go clockwise, I'm going to go to that next 45 with a back stance, and then hourglass, and then back stance to the next slice of the pie, hourglass back stance. So every time I cross, this back foot has to adjust, and then as I drop, right hands down, I'm in an hourglass. And then I keep going clockwise, back foot adjust, hourglass. So it's arm bar because I'm, my chest is off, strike, arm bar, strike, Arm bar, strike, arm bar, strike, arm bar, strike. That's the general pattern. So if you have not yet in your practice area, I mean, depends on how visual the person you are, you should be able to do this without tape, but it never hurts to, to put some painter's tape down, uh, particularly like at least two of you are in a basement uh, I think your spouses will let you get away with that. I don't know. But the eight compass headings is basically what we're doing right now with this exercise. All right. So, again, I'm going to do it again. You can do it with me or you can watch again this time. Doesn't matter. 
but I'm going to go to a back stance with a left back, hidden strike, and just drop that elbow, right? You can even think of it as an elbow strike because it quite well could be, depending on what you're doing. My chest is at this 45, I drop, my chest is at this 90. Then my foot slides, I'm back to a back stance with a single windmill. Second windmill is on the hourglass. I pivot, windmill, back stance, hourglass. 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 Back, hour, back, hour. And that's, that's all eight. All right. So here we go. I'm going to call it out that way and we can all do it together. And then after that, I'm going to come stare at you. So here we go. Uh, going to our left. Ready. Back fist. Hidden strike. Elbow. We're in it. Back stance. Drop to the hourglass. Okay. Windmill. Back stance 45. Hourglass. Back stance another 45. Hourglass. All these are windmills. Everything's clockwise. Back stance another 45. Hourglass. Back stance 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 45. Hourglass. And that's, that's all eight. Let's see how you guys do with that. So I'm gonna do it again. Ah, I keep tripping over that. I'm gonna do it again to where I just pinned the overhead camera so you guys can see my lovely part line. Uh, so if I go back stance, see how my arm is that's actually supposed to be orange. I don't know if it looks orange. It looks yellow on the video, but it's orange on the floor. So my hand and my knee are pointing at that circle. Orange to me, right? My chest is pointing towards the green one there because I'm in a back stance. The second I drop, See how my chest is now square with orange. And then I go clockwise. Now I'm, in, I'm straight on that line. You can see the line with my foot, but my chest is pointing straight ahead. My chest is pointing this way because I'm in a back stance. 
Then when I go to hourglass, you see my chest is pointing towards the green. Then I come here, back stance, my chest is pointing towards the red, my chest is pointing to, there's no circle there. Okay, back stance, my chest is pointing towards this blue circle and Madonna. Hourglass, chest is pointing red, chest is pointing to lime green, chest is pointing blue, chest is pointing straight to the back, no man's land, there's no circle, chest is pointing green, chest is pointing pink, chest is pointing to no circle, chest is pointing orange, chest is pointing pink, chest is pointing green again, chest is pointing orange. All right? So, I uh, just wanted to clear that up one more time, make sure everybody's getting that, that whole concept of I'm manipulating with hourglass versus straight uh, back stance, I'm manipulating the direction of my chest and my kinetic energy is going. So, let's you try again uh, and I'll stare at you profusely through the lovely technology. I'm going to get a visual aid and be right back. I'm back. All right. This is a little bit wider than my shoulders, but some of you aren't quite getting the whole clockwise, counterclockwise thing. So, and I don't even know if I'll be able to do it with this, but I'm still seeing some people going clockwise, counter, clockwise, counter. And it should be the entire time around this circle, everything should be clockwise. So you see there's no break in this circle. There's no break in this circle. It only goes one direction. So everything right now I'm doing is clockwise. Uh, if this was a little bit smaller, it might be easier. But this is going clockwise counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, right? I don't want that. I want to continue clockwise the entire part of the circle. Uh, maybe this will help. I'll actually stick something in my hand. So, this is this, I think that's probably a little easier to see, right? This, and maybe if I hold it a little bit different, you can see that it's just a smooth ellipse constantly going the same way. If it's 
if I stop, I put on the brakes and go the opposite way, and then stop and put on the brakes and go the opposite way, every time I do that, I'm wasting energy. I am wasting, I've got to put the brakes on, hit, put the brakes on, hit, put the brakes on, hit, or stop. I want to continually go the same direction. If you take two identical twins with the exact same athletic ability, raised at home, no, no medical problems, they're two functioning kids that are basically the same and stick them in a room and you make one of them run from one end to the other of that room as fast as he can and then you have another kid go the same length but he does it the shuttle run so he goes here 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 but does the same length who is going to win the person that goes one distance without stopping or the person that has to put on the brakes change directions put on the brakes change directions yeah, I think it's obvious. It's the one that goes the long way. So don't, what I've seen a couple of times is here, you go this way and then you come back across to do the hourglass. And then here, and then you, you put on the brakes and you come back to do the hourglass. That is Chigao, that is not what we're doing. We're here, and this hand just keeps going this way, this way, this way, this way. So when the right hand's up, I'm in a back stance. When the right hand's down, I'm in an hourglass. And then it just it keeps going around. High, low, high, low, high, low. And if I just do that, I do that here, straight onto the camera without turning, you see that motion is just an ellipse. It's going, it's covering, I'm covering basically my entire torso. By the time I get both hands in, this hand is covering across the torso and down and up and down. This hand's coming across the torso and, and covering the other way. So I'm ending up either open hand or closed hand. I'm covering my entire torso as I do that motion. And I'm getting the pops, force efficient, force efficient, turn into 45 so you can see, force efficient, force efficient. So the in-betweens aren't 100% force efficient, but we're not going like this, right? So this motion is just a little bit of an arc and a little bit of an arc, and with our body motion, that covers all of this. Our entire box is covered our torso is covered. If we need to cover our face, our hand just opens. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to actually just call it out uh, one time and then watch you one more and then we're going to change something. All right. We're going to mess up your world by going the opposite direction. All right. <clears throat> So here we go, very first one, left, back fist going to our left. Ready, go, back fist inside out, drop to hourglass, clockwise back fist, clockwise hourglass, clockwise back fist, clockwise hourglass, back fist, hourglass, Back fist, hourglass, back fist, hourglass, back fist, hourglass, 
back fist, hourglass, back fist, hourglass. Uh, one more quick visual guide as I pin the ceiling again. So when I'm saying back fist with my lines, it's so much easier to do with lines, but my foot is on that line or at the edge of the line. Every time I do hourglass, my heel crosses. So in order for this heel to point towards my big toe of the back foot, it's got to cross. I'm getting in kind of a, a bad lean here just so you can see my feet a little bit better, I, I think. Let's see, any of these? Yeah, that one's a little bit easier to see from the overhead view. So trying to get where my feet are visible. So front foot is on that line. I'm in a back stance. Heel turns towards that big toe. I'm in an hourglass, right? All it does is pivot. I'm in an hourglass. Back stance, hour. Now I'll do it with the chest. So back stance, feet are on the 45, chest is on the 90. Hourglass. Foot has switched, chest has switched to the 45. All right, try that on your own and I will see how that looks before we continue. Brady, try to, uh, when you're transitioning to the new line, slide the foot. So you're in a back stance in an hourglass. When you go to the new line, let the front foot slide to it. I'll show you, on, I'll pin the overhead and show you again. Uh, where's my pen? So you're saying slide instead of step, right? Yeah, so what, what, I'm, seeing, what I'm seeing, Brady, is... You're kind of, you're going back stance, hourglass, and then to get to the new line, you're kind of, <laughs> I exaggerated, it's not, you don't do that many, but you, you turn and then come over and, and are at the new line. So think back stance, hourglass, now I need to go to this new line, so I'm just, I'm taking the weight off the front of my back foot, my right foot, and letting it pivot. And then my left foot is just sliding. Oh, okay. I see you're pivoting your right foot on your heel instead of the ball of your foot. Okay. Yeah. When, when I do, that's a good point. When I, when I, like all of these motions with the front foot are all on the ball, the heel is off the ground. But as I pivot, to the next line, I am pivoting on the heel of my foot, okay? So I'm just gonna do back stance to the different lines at this point. And so I'm gonna take the weight off the front of my foot and I'm doing this initially to stay in the center of my triangle. But I can't tell if you can see, I'm taking the, the, I'm taking the weight off the front of that back foot. So now you add in here, here, here. Just FYI, when you tell us that uh, you're going to pin your overhead camera, from my perspective, nothing changes. Oh, uh, well, uh, did you uh, initially double click on me at the beginning when you first logged in? 
I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know, because uh, when, uh, when I do it on my screen, I've got whichever video is pinned is big, and then I've got all the little, all you little guys up top above me. Yeah, that doesn't make a difference on our end. Ah, okay. So you would have to physically double click on the overhead? Mm hmm. All right. Sorry. Technology doesn't always uh, do what I think it does. Just wanted to let you know. Otherwise, it's not a big deal, though. Yeah, yeah. So you guys have to manually switch. All right. Uh, do that a couple more minutes, and then we're going to reverse it and do go the opposite direction. Actually, I changed my mind. We're just going to do something different instead of warping your noodle and making you go the opposite direction. All right. Can I, uh, can I ask a question on the, uh, the foot movement uh, while we were there? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the, uh, when I keep doing it in a row, I, uh, my back leg uh, feels a lot of weight on it, uh, which makes sense to me. But um, is there is there a way um, to to do that movement with less pressure on, and less weight on that the back leg? Yeah, I have the same problem. So initially, back stance. When I initially do that first, oh crap! I've been attacked. Move. My weight is on the back because it's a back stance. When I rock into that hourglass, I should be going 50-50, maybe. 52.48. I'm, I'm trying to place weight forward from where it was. It was all, 70% of the weight was on the back leg. Got it? So uh, the weight is supposed to be back on a back stance. Hourglass, we drop that weight forward. And on initial impact, it usually is a little bit heavier on the front, but then balances back. So you can see. I, as I go into a back stance, I'll put a little bit more oomph on the front leg and then I balance back 50-50. Uh, but then as I'm transitioning, I'm, I'm having to float that front foot to move it. So my weight is going back and then it's going back into an attack. Again, we're doing, hopefully in a fight, your, your opponent isn't just going around in a circle with you, right? <laughs> this is a drill. Uh, I think we all understand it's a drill, not one encounter. I'm trying to get you used to going, oh, crap, boom, and being able to transition. Hey, I'm in an arm bar. Oh, I'm in a shoulder lock, you know, to be able to, I can't do a shoulder lock. <laughs> I can go from arm bar, uh, arm bar position where my chest is facing this way. If I go up to do the shoulder lock, what do I got to do with my front foot? I've got to turn that front foot to get the distance. If I'm still in a back stance, I can't reach my arm to do that, that shoulder lock or full front <laughs> arm bar. I've got to come in here. And that's what I'm trying to get you to to start feeling your body telling you, I need range. I don't need to do, I don't need to go uh, from here to here to get it. I don't need to step up usually, right? I just go into an hourglass and I'm right here, the beginning of Nahachi with either a shoulder lock or arm bar, depending on if their thumb is up or down, that kind of motion. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, that makes a, it took some pressure off my back neither. <laughs> <clears throat> All 
All right, so now what I want, we're gonna do just a little bit different. All right, so I, was, I want you to, we're still gonna turn. I'm just gonna keep this where we're going the same way. We're going clockwise here and we're going clockwise around our circle. So I want you to back stance with your initial, oh crap, drop, hourglass, hourglass to back stance. Now this time, instead of just going, going hourglass and down with that, I want you to, to strike forward with it. Okay, so this hand, I'll face forward, this hand that was doing hourglass is still, for the most part, it's doing hourglass. The, the angle switches only because our forearm rolls into a punch. So it ends up snaking up, but in regards to our upper arm, in this motion, all that happens is our forearm launches, our, our upper arm launches forward, and that rolls, okay? So, uh, let me show you what I want in a little bit more detail. So we're gonna do our initial, oh crap, drop our elbow. We're gonna drop down into an hourglass, Clockwise, back stance, hourglass punch. So it's just like a double, except our hand, top hand rolls over. And then we're gonna go hourglass, right hands there, punch, drop, hourglass, Back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass. Back stance, right hand on bottom, hourglass, right hand punches. Back stance, right hand on bottom, hourglass, right hand forward. Back stance, right hand on bottom, hourglass forward. One more time. Back, oh crap, oh crap, drop. Drop, go back stance, punch hourglass. Clockwise, back stance, hourglass. Back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass, back stance, hourglass, back, hour, back, hour, back, hour. All right, I'll go through it with everybody. Any, that's too crazy. Is that too crazy or is that okay? All I see is thumbs. All right. All right. So here we go. Starting out. Uh, we're gonna go left with our old crap and go. Back fist, cocky, drop. Drop your right hand, hourglass. Come around, back stance, right hand comes up, hourglass with a punch, drop your right hand. It can be closed or open, doesn't matter. Continue clockwise, back stance to the new angle, hourglass, punch, drop. Back fist, new angle, or, sorry, Windmill, new angle, hourglass, punch, drop. Windmill, new angle, hourglass, punch. 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 Windmill, new angle, Hourglass punch, I'm just gonna keep going around. Windmill, new angle, hourglass punch. Windmill, new angle, hourglass punch. Windmill, new angle, hourglass punch. 
windmill, new angle, hourglass. When I do this hourglass, my right hand's coming up on the inside to punch. Windmill, new angle, right hand comes up inside, punches with the hourglass. Windmill, new angle, hourglass, punch. Windmill, new angle, hourglass, punch. Windmill, new angle, hourglass, punch. All right. Um, so I'm going back fist, inside, out, and dropping. So I'm just basically going into a double. Then you guys have all seen in Nahachi where we do that motion, right? So we come here, punch. So that's essentially what this drill is doing now. You're just doing different angles around the 360. So as I come here and drop, in order to fold an arm out of my way, my right hand comes up on the inside and I punch, and then I can drop that down uh, to strike belly, or maybe there's an arm in there, who knows? Uh, all depends on what you're thinking. If I come up on the outside, chances are I'm going to hit an arm and not be able to punch. So I'll show that. Uh, so if I come up this way, that arm, bad guy's arm is right there in the way and I can't get up to his neck unless I change angles and then it's probably easier for me to hit with the left hand. Uh, again, we're doing air drills, so it's kind of hard to, you've got to visualize this. If I am here and I bring this up on the inside, see how I can windmill on the inside of my own arm as I push their arm out of the way? And we do that motion frequently in kata and end up where we're doing that kind of motion. So I'll take the bad guy's arm and push it out of the way, come up on the inside, and then I can take his neck. Uh, fingers, knuckles, back of the hand, forearm, it clears it out of the way. So that's what we're doing. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to do it one more time with you, and then I'm going to stare at you relentlessly with my piercing eyes uh, as you do it. I'll be right All back. All right. All right, so back fist, inside, drop elbow, hourglass, we got our groin cover. We're coming over, so I'll, to visualize, I'm opening that hand, you don't have to, but if you think about like a, somebody's arm being there, I'm covering it, and then latching onto it as I come up in hourglass, so he's straight out of Nahashi right there, and punch, and then I can drop his arm and I can go into uh, an arm bar at that point. All right, so then I just continue around hourglass, come up on the inside with that hourglass as I punch, and then back to back stance, hourglass up on the inside, punch, back stance, hourglass, punch, back stance. Hourglass punch, back stance, hourglass punch, back stance, hourglass punch, back stance, hourglass punch. Okay, let you guys try that on your own. I'm grabbing a bottle of water. If you need one, get one too. I still think I should drink all Dan's fruit punches that he uh, left here. So Lee, the punching hand, when it comes down, I don't know why, just that whole movement just feels awkward. Like I'm going from a straight arm to straight down. Should that hand be pulled back and then go down? Or is it, am I just making more of a fuss about it than I should be? Actually, it seems to be in common with punch defense. 
Remember the punch defense? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something and you're gonna you're gonna be mad at yourself. You know turtle? How yeah. we go clockwise, counterclockwise? So as your body's turning, so I, I'm doing that punch. <clears throat> And then just my arm just bends a little bit and then pops right back down. Same as that motion in, in turtle or windmill, right? We go here and see how my arm stays just a little bit curved. It's curved here in that upper, curves around and it's back out into a single, kind of the, the same. I guess same, same. Marvin's laughing over there, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm striking and I'm not doing a full recoil and bend because that's slowing me down. I'm, as I'm, as I strike, I just let it bend a little bit and pop it down into that next move. Right? So, this goes back to some of our speed drills where I talk about 165 degrees, right? Every time, if I punch, well, if I come up to 75 degrees, put on the brakes and then go forward and then retract, every time I'm doing that, I'm putting on the brakes. If I punch, I'm trying to find the, the best angle. If I punch and then go around, you see how I'm not, I'm not doing this motion? Maybe that black is better with my red shirt. I'm not punching, pulling back and doing this or punching, pulling back and doing this motion. Again, most martial arts, most particularly karate, they do <coughs> this motion, right? And you can see them when they're really doing it hard, you can see their whole upper bodies swaying. Well, that's an outside and a down block or combined double. Our doubles are more forward as well as our singles are more forward. And a lot of people do their heads almost straight up and we go more forward. So when I strike and I know I'm going down next, I'll start with you. I strike and I know I'm going down next, I don't wanna pull back and shoot through. I just wanna take a shorter path and a more elliptical or arc path rather than chunk, chunk. Enough, too much, answer the question, not answer the question. Trying to see which one's Brad on the screen. Oh, I got a thumbs up, okay. All right, I'm going back to watching. Taking a tour of Brad's ceiling. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm home alone with the girls and they wanted to go play on the front. So I'm just moving from upstairs to downstairs so I could be closer and hear them. You know, make sure no one's asking them if they want candy. Yeah. <laughs> Check out my van, little girls. Oh, 
my thorn. I did not mute myself. All right, let's play with that a little more now. All right, so now we're just gonna change it up a little bit. Now keep in mind, I decided to just keep going the same way to, to one be less confusing today during this two hour session and two, you doing this to the opposite direction should be something you should be able to figure out on your own between now and the next class, right? So why should I kill the rest of the class going the opposite direction when that's something you can get comfortable going one direction, you should be able to get comfortable going the other direction. So now what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna go, oh crap, Oh crap, drop. We're gonna drop into this. And I really want you this time to think, just open that hand as you do it. Go ahead and open the hand. I want you to come up hourglass, but this time as you punch, I want you to bring that back foot forward and then hourglass and return it to the center. Okay, all right. So again, I'll be here. I'm gonna, oh crap, oh crap, drop, drop into a hourglass, and then open your hand, come up and start leaning into it, punch, and then retract, drop, okay? Do that again. So left's on top. Oh crap, oh crap. Drop, we're still in our back stance. Right hand's gonna go low, hourglass. Left hand opens, covers space. We're in a back stance. Right hand comes up on the inside. Not hunchy style, so I'm right there on top of that hand. Back leg comes, we punch, we pull back and drop into a double, right hands on the bottom. Then we shut or slide over, we're in a back stance. Right hand covered our, or left hand covered our face again. Right hand comes up on the inside, touches our arm, we're going into that hourglass. We Foot and hand go forward, foot and hand come back, but don't bend it. Just think of it relaxing and drops down clockwise into a double. Now, cut open left hand, cover the face. Right comes up on the inside hourglass, Nahanchi style. Both right sides go forward, both right sides come back, right hand drops clockwise, double. Left hand opens, shift, drop, right hand comes up, hourglass, both right hand, right foot forward, right hand, right foot back, drop, double. Left hand opens, cover face, left hand drops, hourglass, nahanchi, both rights forward, Punch, both rights back, right drops, 
double. The left hand opens, slide. The left hand down, hourglass, nahachi. Both rights forward, both rights back, drop, double. The left hand opens, cover. Left hand down, hourglass, nahachi. Both rights forward, both rights back, dropping, double. Left hand opens, slide across. Left hand down, hourglass, nahachi. Both forward, both back, double. And somebody just Join. Coming in really, oh, okay. Did we lose Brad and then we apparently lost Brad. Now he wants back in. You shouldn't let him. Yeah, I don't know if we should let this guy back in after he abandoned us. <laughs> he has to be okay next time. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go through that one more time, nice and slow like that. Go through what? Exactly. <laughs> now I know the lifespan of this computer's battery. <laughs> Did you see any of that, Brad? You were like, you started, you go, okay, back fist, back, and then it died. So oh, no, I missed, I missed the whole darn thing, but it's right. fine. I'll, I'll, yeah, 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 because you're just stepping forward with your foot, punching, coming back, and then starting over again. Yeah. All right. I'll learn as I go. Step by step, one more time for the remedial section <clears throat> for the short bus. Is that still your Facebook cover? All right. <clears throat> I don't know why I start losing my voice by the end of all of these uh, Zoom sessions. All right, so we're going to go to the left. We're going to turn to the left. We're going to turn back for this. Oh, crap. Throw our kake, our hidden. And then our elbows are going to drop down to cover. Okay. Now, I'm going to open that hand and drop that heel into hourglass. That's turning my body to where I can punch. Both right hand, both right hand and right foot come up, punch. Both right hand, right foot come back and drop into a double. <clears throat> Left hand opens, slide and cover. Start the same thing over again. So I'm in a back. I drop down to an hourglass, come up to Nihachi. Both rights forward, both rights back. Hourglass, well you're already in hourglass, but you just drop down. It's somewhere halfway between clockwise and bicycle, if that makes sense to everybody, okay? Left hand opens, adjust to your new deal. Okay, we're in a back stance. Hourglass, come up to Nahachi. Both rights forward, both rights back, right down, double. Left opens, adjust to the new angle. Hourglass to Nahachi, both rights forward, both <coughs> rights back, and drop into a double. Left hand opens, adjust, back stance. Hourglass to Nahachi, both rights forward, both rights back, double. Left hand opens, adjust, hourglass to Nahachi, both rights forward, both rights back, double. Left hand opens, cover face, push down to hourglass, Nahachi, both rights forward, both rights back, double. Left hand opens, cover face. Push down, hourglass, Nahachi, both rights forward, both back, drop. Cover face, Nahachi, forward, back, drop. 
All right. How was that feeling to everybody? I see no Chigawos. All right, do that on your own for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna <clears throat> hydrate my speaking voice and come stare at you. So when you guys are, uh, when you do the press and come up on the inside for Nahachi, when I'm saying Nahachi, try to make sure this hand is at that 45 and don't let it go to here, okay? Uh, like, I, like I've said before, if every degree past 45 puts pressure on the inside. The, this is the ulnar bone, the funny bone, and that nerve, when you hit that funny bone, it's putting pressure there that you don't want. Uh, I actually have an injury here, so I really feel it. And it's really making me more in tune with body weakness as far as the ulnar head is. Make sure as you come up, you cover face, come down. This does not end up flat or near it. It needs to come up. And if you just totally relax, it should come up about 45. Anywhere from 40 to 50, it should come up in that position. And then go shooting out. All right. So a lot of you know in our in our kata. We typically roll palm up. I don't care what you do in regards to this exercise. You can go, just leave it there. You can roll it. You can go double and then drop. There's numerous things you can do. It's all the matter of what you are visualizing. Like if I, if I am pushing that arm, and, and keeping it there, just going here, this is the typical technique that we would do from that, where I'm holding the opponent's arm and I'm coming here. And Taika actually had, uh, at one time we used to come back and really, if you think about that elbow, I strike and then I strike his hand on the way back. And then what are we doing next is an arm bar, or <laughs> I gave it away. We're going here, right? So if I go here, strike that hand, and then immediately go into that double, I'm doing an arm bar. Bob's arms don't work very well. They don't bend the way they're supposed to, but it's right into an arm bar, okay? Uh, if it's the other hand, then I may be, that should have been the other way, but uh, that pulling back motion may be I'm outside and when I pull back and go here, that rolls his elbow up and I get an arm bar from here as I come back down into that. So you've got to start visualizing but do not, do not let that thing go past. I'll give you 46. I'll get my protractor out. I'll give you 46. Anything, anything past that, your goal is to be about 45. That's just naturally relaxed. You pick your hand up. It's going to be about 45 degrees. 
nice and relaxed elbow. If you want to really understand it, next time we meet in one month, two months, three months, I don't know, whenever the, the zombie apocalypse is over, I'll take a, one of my sledgehammers and hit you right here uh, really hard and then you'll never go past 45 again because it'll hurt like hell every time you do it. I don't think any of you want to do that, but you know, just offering. All right, so continue doing this. Uh, I'm going to stare at it a little bit more. All right, I'm going to uh, talk for a couple of minutes and then uh, we'll uh, open it up to where if you've got specifics, I can sit there and critique anything specific. Uh, this exercise, we've only done it one, we've only done it with single, starting out with single of the same side, right? So think about this. You can start it going the other way, obviously, and go, instead of clockwise, go counterclockwise. We can also start it with hourglass back fist here, and then go clockwise. So there's several variants that you can practice at home if you just sit there and think how many possible ways I can do this. I can do it same side, single, Opposite side single, starting the opposite direction and going counterclockwise, starting the opposite direction and going counterclockwise. You can start it with a double. You can start it with a double opposite sides up. You can start it with a head, same side. And so obviously something's gonna be a little different in each of those. So think about that. This exact same drill, uh, if I come here and drop down into this motion, that hand is up. Do I want to just go here? Or do I want to strike and come up and do it? So obviously, <coughs> numerous ways this can go down, but these these exercises are very good defensive motions where you're, you're covering your face and you're changing your body angle, but you're constantly going clockwise to get yourself in position, in a power position, power or sufficient position to do an arm bar, to do a strike in force efficient, to do a follow-up arm bar, 
And right now we've only played with back stance hourglass, but obviously I can cover the face, strike hourglass, come up into a horse stance as well. So there's numerous ways we can go with this. This is just a very kind of introduction, trying still the main goal during this pandemic Zoom session uh, that we keep having is to get you to understand your body and how it moves, how it gains, one movement gains you range, one movement gains you force efficiency. All of that together is what we're trying to do. Put it all together and get you to understand your body. All right, with that in mind, uh, we got 10 minutes left. If you have a specific thing that you want to uh, do, uh, want me to help you with, uh, I'll, I'll call on names and see if, uh, just go down the line. If you don't have anything, just stick with what you're doing. So Brad's uh, the first, or Brady's the first, sorry. Uh, last class you were showing a move where your, uh, your right foot would go back. Yes, left. The, the, what we call the deep line. Yeah, I found that to be pretty comfortable. But I was curious, what are some follow-up moves to that? I kind of made up my own, but I don't know if they're very good. So uh, actually, the same thing that we're doing now. So right now, uh, just so everybody kind of knows, basically, this is inside out. So I'm inside the spider web, and I'm, I'm doing things. You can also... I'm outside the spider web and I'm working towards that inside line. And there's a couple of different ways we get there. Bob and obviously Marvin and Brad have had uh, a spider web drill where we start, uh, where we end up in positions where everything we do is pivoting us around the different angles and we're outside the web. Well, deep line. So think about just that last drill we did with that open hand, deep line, cover, or deep line, shot, coming up, and back, right? So there's, there's numerous more drills that we can do with that deep line later on, as well as the uh, back corner drill that uh, Bob, Brad, and uh, obviously Marvin have had in, in the actual Spiderweb one. That makes sense? Yes, I was doing something where then I was shifting my, shifting over to the other side for a, a follow up. And I'll show you and see if it's uh, useful or if there's a problem with it. Okay, show. Sure. So I can't, I can't get my target yet. See that? Yep. Uh, definitely useful. Uh, and it, it's a good start. You're, you're, what I, the best part of it is, the best part of it is you're thinking now. You're starting to think about that web and where your opponent is. So when you are doing this stuff, when you're getting into visualization mode, if I'm inside the web, I'm thinking of my opponent here outside the web, right? I'm, I'm doing a drill, I cover the face, strike, come up, I'm thinking of my opponent here. Now my opponent may shift. When you, when you do deep line or some of our other drills, where's my opponent? He's inside. So what you kind of did is you went here and then you switched from this line to a 45, but you refaced your pole. So you're using your pole as the center of the web. It's, it's perfect. It's the kind of thinking that uh, Pika liked, right? You're starting to think for yourself and understand your own body and, and come up with drills. Uh, Taika came up with probably a billion drills and only showed us a small portion of them. Uh, he wanted us to take principles. These are principles really that I've been giving you 
ever since we've been in lockdown, I've been giving you principles in the shapes of drills. My goal and hope is that you take the principles and go, okay, clockwise, okay, counterclockwise, back pedal, forward pedal, uh, uh, deep line, you know, take all these things and start coming up with drills. The end goal is you want to be able to go in any direction facing in or facing out on that spider web and be able to do single, double, or head with any hand so that in a fight situation, you're completely prepared. You've done everything. Everything feels natural to you. One of the most important things in a fight is that stuff feels natural to you. And it doesn't feel like, oh crap, what do I do now? You just flow. Okay, that answers my question if you want to ask somebody else a question or if somebody okay. else. Okay, uh, Bob, anything from Bob? Bob's good, okay. Uh, Trinidad? Rick, you got any questions? I keep, uh, Rick's gonna get mad at me that I keep forgetting him on his account. <laughs> uh, this is a really a uh, side thing. I, I don't think it's super important. I was just curious about the, um, when you have open hand positions. Yes. Uh, so it, it's, it feels pretty natural. It's from what I can see, you, you never do anything like this, right? No, uh, well, um, the only time I make a, a position like that is if I'm striking with this knuckle. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things Taika loved to do was he would do this kind of motion and then he would strike with that knuckle on the opposite side of the person's head. Uh, <laughs> So there's other times, sometimes I'll make that position. Uh, there's a technique, uh, Marvin and Lisa and I like to work on something called the vomit point. And we'll, we'll strike in and roll to where we're hitting that part of our knuckle, uh, somewhere in this region on our opponent's hand. So sometimes we do make that kind of hand position, but usually, uh, like everything I showed today is I'm just kind of swiping across the face to cover it. Okay. 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 So Good. if you're doing a swiping motion, you're never trying to do it something really tense like that. No, only time. So if you think about like face, there's hard muscle or hard bones here. There's hard bones here. There is some padding here. If I go hard knuckle to the skull, uh, the mandible, maximal. Uh, if I go bone to bone, I'm gonna do more damage to me than to the person. So the only time I, I do anything with that knuckle is when I'm going uh, bone to muscle, belly, bone to side of neck, that kind of stuff. Then I can use that. Okay, thank All you. Right. Eric, do you have any questions? I'm good. He's good. Marvin, you got any questions? Marvin, no questions? Oh. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Burad Bukhari, any questions? No, not really any questions. I did watch that uh, seminar with the Nunchakus, Alex's seminar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that was pretty good. Um, I feel like I finally kind of got the figure eights figured out, you know, after all these years, like how to <laughs> how to do that. Only thing I noticed was um, after the uh, the second crane, you know, where we do the one, one, you know, just down one time and up, and then forward, back, and we start with the left side. When you and I practice it, we step out and go this way. And he does not do that. And I just didn't know if there was like one correct way and one not. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're correct. We should be doing, we should be doing that motion, you know, where we, we kind of go out like it's a Joe. Uh-huh. And do our. And then come around. Uh, 
I actually have video of Alex doing it, but for some reason, he didn't do it during this seminar. So I don't know if he just forgot that one part or maybe he left it out. Uh, I'll, I'll tell everybody this, uh, Marvin knows this oh too well. Uh, there, switching back to me, there is something called watermarking. <laughs> uh, so a lot of times people will teach a kata and if they're teaching it publicly to people outside of their system, they will watermark it. They will take one or two moves out of it um, because maybe they, maybe they don't trust that, you know, people are gonna give them credit for it so that they can always see historically down the line 10 years from now, somebody does it without that move, maybe they, uh, you know, and they claim they got it from somebody else. And, you know, then they can tell that, hey, no, I know they got that from me because I added or subtracted that move. So it had to be, it had to come from this seminar or this lineage. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's what, what Alex did, or maybe just, you know, people when they're teaching get nervous. I commonly, get nervous uh, when I'm teaching something public, particularly to people that are not my regular dojo students or part of Oyadate. So I actually have an older video of Alex at the seminar that the two of us learned that together, I think 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. Uh, and after we did it, the instructor made us all record ourselves doing the whole thing in a walkthrough. And mm -hmm. Alex does the, we called it uh, a Joe strike because you lean and you straighten it out mm -hmm. uh, almost like a Joe. And I call it a jab. Is, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not quite <laughs> as long as a Joe, but it kind of is reminiscent from a Joe strike in another kata. So, so all I can tell you is, uh, I do have video reference to that, both from the instructor we both learned it from, and I've got a video of Alex doing it. I don't know why for sure he left it out uh, of that I, seminar. I, I think he forgot it because whenever we did the, um, the seminar in Kansas City, the one that you ran, yeah. he didn't teach it then either. That was something oh, you really? showed me. Yeah, that, I learned that move from you. And so Maybe I was I curious should... when I watched it again, if if uh, if he would do add it in this time, maybe I should uh, forward that to him and forward his old the old video of him doing it and say, hey Alex, what happened to this move? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and he he teaches it in chunks, like you saw. So uh, it's possible when you're teaching it in chunks that you forget which section you're in and that there's this this straight move in there. So uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we call this one good? I had just one more thing. Can you, you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. I got this earpiece in. It also acts as my microphone, and this is the first time I've used it on this, so I was just curious yeah. if it worked or not. Yeah, it works fine. It's a little bassy instead of trebly. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like some of the mid range and highs are cut out, but I can understand everything you say. Uh, a difficult thing just the way your camera is positioned, and I'm sure you did that uh, so you could see your girls or whatever, with all of that sunlight behind you, it's kind of hard to yeah. see you. But yeah, other than I that, know. I just, I needed to keep an eye on them, yeah. Uh, so two things before the next one, I don't know if anybody uh, noticed my post, I've made a couple of posts. Uh, I would like to do uh, some of these similar drills, but with a Tonbo maybe get something you could see a little bit better. So if you've got a short stick around 24 inches or so, I want to show just some of these same kind of drills with the Tombow, perhaps next Wednesday. And if you have any kind of ball at home, that we can use to do some drills. I'd really like to do some 
the haunchy or or just even sticky hand drills with a ball. If you can find some kind of ball to, to bring to class, in other words, uh, have with your camera system next week. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Hey, thanks, Lee. Thanks. See you next Saturday. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Who said, who said us? <laughs> <laughs> Marvin's holding up a picture of Tyka. It's not Marvin, it's Tyka. Okay. <laughs> Tyka's staring at us. All right. Take care, all.